Hello, and welcome to Banker Theory Builder Worlds. This is a return to Necromunda. Yes, indeed, we are going to return to Necromunda in this video. It's some while since I've done a Necromunda build. Um, it's just not enough time to work. Work, actual work, proper work is real busy at the minute. Um, we're frantically making TV programs and videos. Well, I say we, other people are making videos for me. I've got a ton of other things to do. And my summer of being a pirate has already started too, which is kind of cool. Check out this picture. Oh, and this one. That's what I do for a living. Neat, isn't it? But um, I want to squeeze some what I'm making in. And uh, my problem is actually, um, I want to do something about this. Let's pick the camera up. Can you see that great big stack in the corner over there? Look, uh, it says why I'm a quest and kill team and ash waste. And what else is on here? Uh, Cursed City and War Cry, Red Harvest and Space Hulk. Most of that is kind of. Uh, Necromander Underhive and Lord of the Rings and Blackstone Fortress and. And then there's a whole load of models next week. Look, 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 look. get out of the way. Look, here we go. Look. Oh, loads. That's <sighs> quite a lot there. Quite a lot there. Um, not to mention all the Star Wars uh, models that I need to kind of uh, um, be getting on with because I've, I've enjoyed making progress there. <laughs> some of my friends online, some of you excellent people, have painted me Star Wars figures. Oh, yes, you have. Um, and then. <laughs> Literally, just before I opened this video, um, look what came in the post this week. Look, awesome Judge Dread figure painted for me. Not just one, though. Um, I've got like two, three painted judges. And, and wait a minute, wait a minute, um, a bunch of really, really nice warlord. Um, Five kind of like baddies, gang members, all oh, and three fatties. Um, these are the first of the Just Drift figures that I've, I've had. I'm having painted for me. Oh, this is not enough time. And now they've arrived, I really, really want to make some Just Drift scenery in proper Mega City One style. But I'm not going to until I've done some Necromunda stuff. Because I've various people ask me to see build some more Necromunda stuff, and I'm really itching to get on with it. And I want to get rid of some of that pile up there. Um, thing is, it's the last time I've built anything for Necromunda. Actually, still. Just over here. The last time I built anything for Necromunda, it was this, just uh, kind of like out of curiosity, and I still do absolutely love this model. Uh, ash waste kind of thing, and it's based on the thing out of the rule book and the rest of it. The only problem is with that is that, uh, well, it's really, really cool. I do absolutely love it. It's a nice model. It's great because it's based on the thing in the rule book, and I did it just out of interest. But the problem is, is that. I've got a massive collection of Necromunda Underhive and Sump stuff. And um, I'm kind of thinking that I need to make some more stuff for the Sump. It, well, I looked at some of my Sump stuff recently. I do need to, I went back and looked at some photographs, I do need to make some basic flat Sump boards into Sump water on so I can spread everything out. Um, but that, I've got to confess, is not going to make a very exciting video. It's going to be, here is some plywood. Here is some tissue paper being stuck on it and painted. There is the sump. Um, so a bit dull that. Uh, so I'm just going to get on and do that. But um, I want to make some other things to go um, with my sump scenery. Now, I thought what I would do is that case would be to utilise stuff that's in the Ash Waste set and um, use it for the sump. Why the hell not? Uh, that's that's kind of my plan. So um, I'm going to make... Um, Another bit of sump water with some dwellings on it with some rickety footways and bits and pieces between it um, that we can run backwards and forwards. And I'm going to use the hab units from Ash Waste. Why the hell not? They'd be all over the place, wouldn't they? Um, and uh, some other bits and pieces. So this video is definitely going to involve some digging through the CAC, um, but it's also going to involve uh, doing some kit bashing because Agency does some kit bashing. I bought the uh, Ash Waste box when it came out. And I've bought the haulers and stuff, and I wrecked them, and I stuck a bunch of figures together. Haven't done anything else with it. So all the colour have you, and it's, I think, are still on the spruce. So I'm going to have a look at those. I want them, uh, I want the have units to go alongside this 
the uh, fish processing island. I want you know this is kind of like the fish processing island. This might be where the the, the some fishermen dudes kind of like live um, if they're not living on board the cute little boats with the fish island, um, or you know. So there's a bit of a sump settlement. This of course could all tie in with ash waste. The sensible thing to do would be on one side. I've got kind of like uh, you know I've got my my pier town quayside. I could make some uh, ash some sump boards that go down to that have ash waste banks could be outside a hive rather than underneath a hive ah oh, you know uh, all those things could work that might be quite a cool thing to do to actually bring the ash waste to the sump but not in this video in this video i'm just going to crack on so what i need to do is i need to get that bloody great big ash waste box down and uh, we need to start digging around it so um yeah wish me luck and then when this video is done, who knows where the waste of the sump is going to go. Definitely going to be more water. We'll see how we get on with that. And then, Star Wars Judge Dread. Yeah. I've got some stuff for B&B &B I want to make too. But, you know, I mean, as you can see, um, I promise Alex I'm going to stick it in the post this week. Uh, in fact, by the time you're watching this video, you should have your hands on this lovely uh, bank, the Northern Rock Bank. Um, but um, right now it's still stuck here. I've got to finish this model as well which is my rather smart 3D printed uh, ship for Star Wars and there's loads, oh yeah it's just, oh there's so many models I want to make, I want to turn, work gets in the way, life gets in the way and I'm running out of space in the garage for storing all this stuff as well and in here too, um, yeah if anybody wants to kind of like message me and bid for my ash waste scenery that I made with the hauler and that kind of thing give me a shout, you never know I might be open for offers, right let's get on with this build Wait a minute, did I hear you just say that you hadn't seen any of my Necromunda sump builds? I find that very hard to believe. If you are subscribed to this channel already, then you must have watched them. Loads of people go back and watch my back catalogue. Um, if you're brand new to this channel, welcome. Welcome to Magathea Builder Worlds. I'm very pleased to see you. This model is going to go with a whole bunch of stuff I've already made. Check out the playlist, the Necromunda and the, the, the kind of like the Sump playlist. Subscribe first, click subscribe, yeah, do me a favour. Uh, and then uh, go back and watch some of those, you'll get an idea of what I'm doing with this. Uh, and then that way there, um, you'll see how well this, this kind of like matches up. Anyway, right, okay, so thanks for that. Yeah, let's crack on. Right, just so we have an answer getting this down. It's such a massive box. Um, and uh, let's, uh, let's have the lid off very quickly. Oh, yeah. As you can see, mostly untouched. Um, Helamites, bits of crap. Cobble colours. More Helamites. I seem to remember getting extra Helamites. Um, vehicles, vehicles, yeah, gangers, Jesus. Oh, look, there's a thing. What's that? Well, that might be kind of handy. Um, ages since I've looked at this, I've been kind of like sidetracked with other models. Little wheels and stuff for haulers, and that's like. Yeah, those dudes, and then there's flamethrower templates, and then there's some barricades and stuff, and then there's, uh, oh yeah, that looks promising. Oh yeah, barricades. Um, yeah, um, oh yeah, we're gonna need some of that. One like of that, like that, another one like that. Look, um, more orlocks than you can shake a pig and stick at. Um, oh yeah, some, uh, definitely. Hadron Raiders from Age of Sigma. And then there's more bits of um, vehicle um, barrels and stuff. It's quite good. So we dig it through the cactus. Uh, crew dudes there. Um, probably haven't stuck any of these these Raider things together yet. So what the bloody hell are they? They look like German Deutsche Afrika Corps. I have no idea. Uh, they've definitely got crappy helmets. That, 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 that gun's definitely a smasher. Look, look, that's definitely an MP40 there. So it's got to be crowds. Uh, yeah, that's an MG34 too. Look, um, but I, I don't, I don't understand what, where the hell. I don't even know where they came from. Oh, well, um, must be a freebie or four games illustrator or something like that. So here we go. I don't even know how these things go together, but I'm just looking at them. I'm kind of thinking there's pretty much everything I need here to. Um, uh, make a sump settlement without too much bother. <laughs> well, then, of course, <laughs> um, I got one of them too. Yeah, uh, so 
it's going to be a certain amount of me fiddling around for me. Um, yeah, brand new on the sprue. There's more, just more than more of this stuff. This series, this settlement might stretch over more than one board. Look, because there's got to be plenty of sump water and, and stuff in between for kind of like boats to get around, that kind of thing. So um, I only want one or two bits on it. Maybe a, do they stack? Can you stack these things up? Is that possible? I don't know. I haven't tried. Um, but just looking at it. This bit kind of like rising, raising out of the water. What I might do is actually have uh, over there. I might have this bit here, maybe kind of like under the surface of the water, so it's just kind of like there, lower down. I might lower some of these down lower. I might have some concrete kind of stick. Oh, fuck, I don't know. Um, I've got some XPS foam. I can make some kind of like concrete bits and stuff. I think um, my best bet is going to be to actually look at the destructions and make up a couple of the modules at least. Uh, floors and walls and that kind of thing see where they go from there and then uh, see how they can fit on the base yeah okay let's kit bash kids oh, fuck, I just built walls and carved the box around me now as well okay so I'm going to do this one for a minute uh, I'm going to need the, inst uh, the instructions are right down the bottom of that now um, okay I'm going to need the instructions unless unless they've done a really clever thing for this. they've got a simple turp uh, no no, no, I need to take out bollocks. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of hab units first of all, and then see how they come up to sit on the base. Right, bear with. Um, yeah, you don't need to see me fiddling with this plastic kits. Everybody makes plastic kits. That's not a problem at all. Um, so I'm going to knock up a couple of hab units, I think, and um, watch some Game of Thrones. I'll see you in a while. Okay, before we go any further, um, and I'm now kind of like, like I've got as far as sticking this together. Hey, good gummy. Um, I've got to say, god damn, these are cool kids. These really, really are. Uh, many of you are probably playing Ash Waste games and you're using them already and you know how good they are. Um, and I've only just started digging into these kits thinking, god damn, these are cool kits. Um, it's just not going to be difficult to make really hot looking scenery with this stuff. I know it's pricey, right? I know buying workshop scenery is pricey and stuff, but. My word, even if you just take the stuff straight out of the box and stick it together, you get really cool looking stuff. And with a little bit of imagination and a little bit of kind of like jiggery pokery, I'm hoping to get even cooler than cool stuff. So, um, yeah, if you're not a big fan of workshop kits, get over yourself and you know, go buy one, sell a liver or something, sell a kidney or two, one of your kids, that kind of thing. Go and buy some workshop plastic, it's ace. If you don't like workshop plastic, go and buy some of the really cool kind of like, um. MDF kits you can get these days from from different people as well because there's loads of really cool kind of like post-apocalyptic I can't freaking say it loads of you know necromunda esque um, not necromunda not necromunda uh, you know uh, ash wasty zone mortality kind of MDF stuff out there as well needs a little bit more work to make it look as cool as this stuff because this stuff has the advantage of everything moulded onto it but hot oh, damn there's some good models. Right, anyway, I'm going to get back to stick it together and we'll have a look in a minute. I'll show you what I'm up to. Walls. Now this is the bit where it starts to get interesting. He says. I hope. Um, okay, look, come down here. What I've got is, um, I'll show you some stuff in a minute. Um, what I'm going to do now is, uh, <laughs> the big bit of this is making it all make sense. So I've, I've got a few bits kind of put together look there's the extended um hab unit the floor of it and there's another hab unit these are dashed clever because you know in the 40k universe things are made from stc so standard template contracts and what i like about this is they can't like stick to it because it's like, how do you extend it you put a bit in the middle it's a really cool kit man because above anything else if you went out and bought several of them <coughs> Not only could you make a really long one, you could, <coughs> you've even bought two or three, you could get three of these like middle sections and just build one great big long hall. And then you could use the other bits for making um, little square hab units, which is really, really neat. Um, I've also discovered that, um, yeah, I think they will stack. You get these kind of like pluggy bits that will kind of go on uh, the supports that kind of hold them up in the air. But they also look very much like they will go plug into. I haven't put a, stuck a roof together yet, but the holes are like in there, and they'll plug in the roof like that, 
Uh, that's clever. Now, again, some of you people who have been playing Ash Waste for a while probably know this already. But for me, it's a complete revelation. And there might be some people out there who have not. And they go, oh, that's another cool thing. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I might have uh, this have you in it with a thing. And then have a, 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 another floor in it. Might be pretty neat. Um, uh, or I'm going to stack up two of these on top of each other. Anyway, let's have a look at the board that I'm doing this on and start thinking about how it's going to lay out. So I'm going to move things out of the way. Now, <clears throat> so here's where we're starting. This is a two foot by one foot piece of uh, eight mil plywood. Not messing around with this necromunda sump stuff. The other stuff is done on ply. Um, <clears throat> this has got the added benefit of uh, me having had this cut ages ago. I mean, like, well, last time I did some stuff which was ages ago, God, must be at least a year, uh, and there's been a stack of it underneath my desk, just sitting there with other stuff piled on top of it, which means it's nice and flat, which is a winner, because that's always the problem with all this kind of stuff, is bloody warpage. Now, um, I'm conscious I don't want to put too much on this, uh, because I want space for water and boats to move around and, and jetties, that kind of thing, thinking that this settlement might stretch over at least two of these boards. But this board is the one I'm using for me. So what I'm thinking, first of all, is having stuff at angles. The problem with this, the nature of these boards is that um, you're kind of like going to think in rectangles. And I don't want that. So it's kind of got to be kind of weird how you plot it out. So things, first of all, have not got to be perpendicular and parallel to the sides. I don't want them at angles and things. Um, so I'm thinking of having this now. This is this is quite nice because this has got all the bits here. I want this to be a sunken settlement, you know. I want the, it to be rising out of the sump and have the impression there was stuff there before. And so uh, I'm almost tempted to have a roof in one place where clearly uh, another hab unit has been kind of like is is partially underwater. In fact, you could almost do it where you have the, the top bit of the the walls cut off cut off the top of the walls and have the roof on it there and that can make an island um would be quite neat i think <coughs> i could play around with that on another baseball i'm not gonna do it on this one because i've got enough going on here already. so i'm thinking of having a, a double have unit here and either with a then another roof another unit on top of it which might be quite neat and then a single one over here although i quite like the idea of using some of this stuff um, I can't remember what came packed in this, um, but you know, it's that reconstituted cardboard packing. The thing I like about it, it's really textured, it looks like concrete, it's really cool. So I'm, I'm tempted to cut this down, and this could actually have this kind of growing out the top of it, um, which would be kind of cool. And then the other one over there. Different textures. I don't just want this to be a, a plastic kit bash. I want to meld this in with other things. So I either have that sticking out of that or have a square one sticking out the top with kind of cardboardy bits on. But I think I'm going to cut this down to about half height, which would be quite neat. That way there, I can then start to work out. I want footpaths. I'm going to turn this upside down for a minute. I will, yeah, I'll turn it upside down that way. And then kind of turn this up. Well, it doesn't really matter which way around this goes. But I'm kind of liking all the footpaths and bits and pieces you've got. Which is really cool because they've got little hooky, angly bits, but they're angled so they hook onto these round parts that come off. So that, that kind of like is going to do that. Obviously, up the other way. Um, and then I might have that. And you can either then hook it on, or I suppose you could stick it straight so it matches up with that kind of thing. Um, but I like. See if that did that. I don't, I don't just want stuff going off at right angles, though. That's the thing. Um, but you've got extendy bits. The, I mean, I always end up thinking about narratives with these things as I'm, as I'm putting them together. And the, the narrative, obviously, for this is a sunken settlement, a settlement that was there, that was either the sump has right, risen up around. Um, so I want bits to be going in and out of the water. In fact, I could even have bits going in and out of the water like this here with water up over it. So you've got bits that got to jump in between and broken things and stuff. Um, again, though, these are quite nice. This is a, 
that could do that. It could actually just be sitting on the top of the water going down there. It'd be quite neat water underneath. Um, this is going to be here, mind you. Some of these are going to be lifted up, so from that point of view. It's, um, but I don't want it to be all angly. I want it to be a bit of a mishmash. Hmm. You get these nice little things. These are like little jetties that hang down. They're designed to hang down underneath this as well. It's got a way of having. So, essentially, we're going with two hab units. That's definite. Exactly how the connection together, I'm not sure. Um, and I think I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to cut this out and have an experiment, see what it looks like. Uh, if it looks crap, I'll bin it. But um, I think it might look alright. And that will kind of sit on top of it. And there'll be concrete all around. Um, that way, the hab units come up built into the concrete. And the concrete is rising out of the water. Right. Nice thing about it, of course, it's reconstitute carbon, so I could just cut out it. Well, it's done enough. Let's do that. Go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da cool. Flipping it. <laughs> it's tougher than it looks. New knife blade. That's what we can do with. Always use a new knife blade, kids, when you're cutting into cardboard and things you don't know about. You know, because it might work a lot better. So, safety first. Equals new knife blade. Here we are. Stick that in my knife. Give it another cut. Come back to me when I've cut it and see what it looks like. Wish me luck. Tally ho. And then, just like that, the other things kind of start springing to mind and start to kind of like help out. Um, I can't remember if I've used this stuff before in any of my some scene because it's ages. I think I probably have. But like I said, I really like it because you get this cool kind of like texture, which makes it really, really easy to paint. But I found more. Look, this is the one I've cut up, which I'm definitely going to use. Um, but then I'm going to have another one over here. And, and then I decided that what's cool is the fact that I think that these then represent the remains of a previous set of buildings that the sump has risen up around. And somebody's put dwellings on top of them, you know, right on the very top. So now I think I'm going to mount... Uh, this one on there, like that, and I'm going to mount this one on here, like that, maybe, possibly. In fact, I quite like this one, I'm not sure if I like this one or not. Although I might actually just cut another layer off and have it lower down, so it's kind of down here, so the buildings are different heights, um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. So now we start to build that, that narrative that's really important for me, which is kind of like that, you know, this is a previous kind of structure we don't know what it's like under under the water because it's kind of horrible but um yeah so look i'm gonna take my sharp knife sharp earl knife and cut another layer off here which is a bit kind of daring now because dare i say it because once i cut it off it ain't going back on but that new sharp knife did make a difference too and here we go around there Around there, a bit of a chunk going on this bit here. Stick my knife in that side. Try desperately not to stick scalpel, scalpel, fuck that. Desperately stick, not stick standing knife blade into hands this evening. It's already late. Don't need to be leaking blood all over the workshop or over the kitchen as I kind of like. I have to go and repair myself. Right. I want to have this feel of the sump rising, consuming the settlement. So on another board, I think I'll definitely do a sunken roof. I think that will really sell it. And I don't think it's going to fit on this board here, then. Okay, now, that's lower. It doesn't matter if it's uneven, either. Um, but that's quite a neat kind of shape or structure. Although what I might actually do is... Aha, Ahsoka has arrived. Hello, dog. And there go, go, goes the camera. <laughs> Love baby. <laughs> Fucking dog's just walked in. Knocked out of my camera stand. There she goes there. She is a force of nature nowadays, Ahsoka. She's got a lot of junk in the trunk. Um, 74 kilos of junk in the trunk. 
can't remember what the 80 pounds. Thank you, that's just fucking mayhem. Dog walks in, wrecks the joint, walks out again. Okay, yeah, so yeah, 74 kilos. It's 162 and a half pounds. Which is, Jesus, 11 nearly to us. That's got me worn out. It's a lot. She a big dog. Right, okay, so she's come in and inspected, and now I've got to do all that again. So here we go. The angle is back down here like that. Look, okay, so now look, what I'm thinking of doing is not actually, I was, I was, I was quite happy with that on there. It looked kind of cool, but actually, I think that sat in here like that, or one side or the other, taking advantage of the concrete might be quite neat. Um, and then it kind of hangs on the concrete, that's kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, we're gonna do that, I think. Um, because then it's gonna hang over the back, which is fine. Um, and I could still have the odd jetty down there, but then this one over here, either is gonna reach out the wall, so it's gonna have, yeah, this concrete riser, and then this big beggar sitting there like that somewhere. Maybe that way around. Cut it out. That will sit on there. That will certainly give me two different heights for my, my structures which means then if I have walkways between them boats can get underneath this is all about being able to get boats underneath and walkways and jetties and that kind of thing uh, I'm going to carry on tinkering for a few minutes see what else I can come up with oh, ok now it's starting to take shape so uh, little hab unit on the concrete base here Let's get water around it. That's kind of cool. That sits on there nicely with a little ramp up here to this little bit there. God knows why. Um, and then, because you can, there's a right hand corner here. And that's going to go to this big heavy unit, which is, it could spring remain to be a platform, or because I could put a thing on and have a heavy unit above it. But that'll be a waste of a bloody great big heavy unit. I could put a double up heavy unit here. Um, oh man, there's so many choices. Of course, there's tons and tons of, of, of details to go in these kits as well. You know, um, I can the, the hab units you've got bonus like walls that you can block in the boat in various doors so they're not all just kind of like in and out. And then you've got uh, extra ladders and you've got uh, handrails for some of the walkways, although not all of them, which is kind of cool. So there'll still be much falling off there uh, which is kind of neat I like that and uh, yeah loads of tiny little details and, and then wire strops and various other bits and pieces which will be interesting adding one way or another um, which is kind of cool this is uh, nice I like it yeah it's going to be good so I think in some ways what I might do is get a sharpie and mark where my uh, two lumps of concrete are going to go I might have to get on fairly soon when doing the water kind of like base stuff. Putting the water on. Um, well, maybe not tonight. It's getting late. But um, who knows? I uh, could have some other bits sticking out of the water then, couldn't I? But this is quite good because there's still quite a lot of water around the back and around this side here. Not enough room for boats to go under here and I can build low jetties and things so I don't know whether that's going to be the thing that supports that we'll do that there but that might be kind of quite cool hanging down just stuck on low down some of these loopy bits they might have to get cut off to be honest this has got holes in the back and has uh, Fittings that's not on this sprue that will kind of like suspend it from that that bit above it, which is quite neat. But I might lose, yeah, might lose this sticky on bit here. It's unnecessary all the time. It's quite cool though. Or I could have a jetty around the other side. And this one here, there's plenty of opportunity to have stuff hanging down. It's kind of cool. I'm gonna be quite enjoying this. Um, yeah, that's that's my next plan. I think I'm I'm happy with the the island that go have there. That island they're going to have there, which means I'm not using masses and masses of the metal the, the metal kind of like stands that these have units stand on. They're putting them on the concrete, which is kind of cool, and I can get underneath and add more details to it. Wire stops, 
thing to support. Get a pen, mark where the uh, three, the, well, the main two blocks are going to go, because it's obvious where this is going to go. Stick them on, and then the next job, I think, is going to be to add the water surface. Um, certainly enough water surface around this to stick this old bad boy in place before I start adding loads of detail. Although, I might want to decide if there are any wire strops and things going down into water that are anchored to things below the water um, before I add the water. I don't know. Let's get me two bits of concrete stuck on anyway. Alright, because of that, yeah, you just about see that mark there. That's where this one's going to stick. I like this one because it's got this little bit at the back here which could even have a cheeky little boat kind of like stuck inside it when it, you know. Um, well, you won't see much of that there because it's going to do that. That's quite neat. Although then there's this bit here which needs to go down the water, although I might cut that for flush. Here's me worrying about a detail that nobody is going to look at, and it's going to be a pain in the ass to paint, but it will look kind of cool. If I cut that away, that could almost be a trap door into the actual heavy unit, couldn't it? Um, that's a cool idea. So I have this off, which I now don't need, which is now glued in good and hard because it's polystyrene cement and it's like bloody. Uh, but you can have a. I could put. A, yeah. I could just assume. Assume. It's a trapdoor or something up into the main heavy unit because it doesn't need it because it's sitting on the concrete. Let's see if we can get this off. Bollocks. <laughs> yeah, see, the problem with polystyrene cement, right, is the fact that it just welds on real good and hard. All that actually needs is a bloody tank door kind of thing. Oh well, I'm going to do some swearing now. Try and get this off, not on camera. I'm going to need an FBH. <laughs> Well, that wasn't pretty, but it came off in bits. Now I'm going to cut that bit off there, and then, for the first time in this video, I'm going to go digging through the cack. Digging through the cack. Digging through the cack. I need to find a tank hatch or two. It's going to go on the inside and the outside to make this look like it's a... Trap door, because that's going to see it. It's just, this is ridiculous. This is the level of narrative of how my mind works. That's going to see it over this bit here, so you can kind of get a boat in there or something. And it's in, if you had to escape into the sump, there's going to be a kind of like a way down into the sump there from that. And that leaves a tank catching that. So, yeah. Um, let's go, let's go. Digging through the ka 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 Right, I'll just tube it out around earlier. Here we go. Come here, you little mother. Right, you are. Here we are. One of my favourite kinds of glue, not just because of the smell. So, I'm going to run the glue all the way around here and stick this down to the hard, the plywood base. Then I'm going to leave it. Alone, leave it overnight. Then that hopefully will stuck down good and hard, and then I can get closer to sticking my have unit on top of it. Right, stick that on. Not bad. And now we do the same with this one. Loads of glue on all the contact points. With this bit of cardboard, I cut all the kind of like trim around the outside off because it raised it up and looked silly. Again, the key with this, don't even know if that's in a picture. Though. The key with this is going to be to have the tissue paper that makes the sump water lapping up over the top of it when it's all been buried in the sump water. But yeah. 
my sump scenery is taking over. I, mean, I think there's going to come a point where, much as I really enjoyed making my Zone Mortalis stuff, it's going to become mostly redundant, which either means I'm going to recycle it and put it into the sump as well, or I might shift it on. Anybody want some Necromunda Zone Mortalis scenery? You know what it looks like. Go and check out the uh, videos. Make me an offer. I could do with the space in the garage, to be quite honest. Okay, so I'm stick those two are sticking down. I might just stick to some games. Um, he says they're not having played a modern game of Necromunda at all yet. Uh, that's going to go on there like that. That's going to look really cool. That needs then a hatch. Let's do the digging through the cake. Yes, 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 yes. And that's going over there like that. That's going to sit on there. Look real cool. Yeah. Okay, so this is um, where I'm leaving it on the end of the first night. I've now got a plan. So I'm Concrete stuck down, concrete stuck down, a little islandy platformy thing stuck down. The rest of this not stuck down uh, because I'm going to play around with it quite a lot. And so far, I haven't found me a tank hatches to make my trap door into that one. But definitely, definitely, we'll do that. Next job, then build the rest of this hab. A unit, put the water on the on the board, and then start adding all that detail straight away. Roofs, of course, are going to be lift offable, so they're not going to be stuck on. Um, and then all I've got to do, of course, is decide if I go up, I might have, like I said, another unit, hab unit on top. See how many more hab units I can make. We shall see. We shall see. <laughs> Okay, so it's a day or so later, and my concrete bits are all stuck down good and firm. So is this walkway here. Now I'm fiddling around, we're trying to fill it all on. Amazing, this bloody board that's been in here because it's been hot, it's already starting to warp. There's just nothing you can do to stop these blasted things from warping. It's so annoying. I'm gonna put something on the base of this to try and pull it back into shape but god damn it it was flat it was flat as flat when I took this out from the stack and it sat on my workbench and now they're back into the woods just gets right on my tits right um, and I know when I put the paper on the glue I'm going to have to try well so I think I'm going to probably glue underneath try and pull this back into shape but god damn it that's so annoying Nothing to do about it. It's such a shame. I can't work out how to do it. I've been doing it for years. I still never got it. If anyone's got any ideas how I could stop plywood or other forms warping, then please, please tell. Because everything I've tried so far has bloody worked after all these years of doing this. Right. Uh, what am I doing? Well, I need to stick these down somehow to the concrete structures. Um, I'm thinking of actually changing the angle to the angle of this walkway and having it going past I might have another one of these structures here over here so I quite like the idea of that and jetty down here it's all about trying to make um, it's made different levels and interesting places to play so I'm going to build the structure on this one I think that's next oh, as I said but even if I just put the walls on um, and I can work out how the roof is going to work and which one of these I'm going to put another floor on as well but uh, yeah okay so that's the simple answer is I'm going to start making blah 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 make the walls on this and make another structure see if I can do something about my bloody warped base which I have no idea what I'm going to do I'm going to have a bit of an experiment because well, what you need is to actually pull these things into shape so, I think what I have managed to do previously. Oh, look at that. You can't see that very well here. It's a bloody bend in that. Bloody warp. Um, I'm going to add some tissue paper to the back of this, like I would do making it to make water. I'm going to glue it on, and then I'm going to leave it somewhere where hopefully. 
the glue contracting a little bit will pull the board back into shape the other way. That's my theory. Whether or not it will or not, I don't know. But I'm going to move that out of the way for a minute to build the structure on this. Um, the first part of building the structure on this is a straightforward kit assembly, which is not going to be particularly exciting. You've all built plastic kit models before, so you don't really need to watch me do it. Here is the roof and some wall sections, I think. Uh, so come back and see me when I've done it in a minute. Bloody, 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 bloody. A bit of a fiddle and a sulk and a cry now. Not fair. It was nice and flat and now it is. It's not it. Okay, so I haven't stuck anything on the bottom of it yet, so I've still got a warp base. Um, should have been worse than it was at the beginning of the evening. Uh, but I have stuck some of these bits together, as you can see. I've now put... Whoops. Another lid stuck on, obviously. There's a lid on that unit there, which is now sitting on that. And this is made so I can plug that in there, I think. And then what I'm definitely going to do... If I do that, is I'll stick that to that so I can pull the whole thing off. So if I take this bottom off, this whole top will come off. Lid obviously going on there like that somehow. Uh, then the double hub unit over here. Uh, um, and I'm working out the walkways. So I've been messing around a bit more with walkways. Last time I had a walkway that was just going to go straight down there, which I still actually could do. Um, but I've also got... The ability and what I need to do in some ways is chop that. Uh, I've decided I'm either going to have a, another walkway going down here, which would then join here and here. Um, if I do that, it means I've got the option of having another board over here with another walkway joining on, which might be quite cool. I can make another base with a, another thing that was the right width to have a, a board, a, a joint going across there. Which might be kind of cool. Um, so that goes up there. Because then that kind of carries on the roadway pathway kind of thing. Again I need to do a little bit of kind of like jiggery pokery. And cutting with the walkway so they will fit on. But that's quite neat. Um, well I could have this off here. Keep the key side there. And do something with this one. And have it go across there. And cut fit and make that fit on. I don't know, I still need to fit it with that. I like the idea of different levels and waters and jetties and and stuff. These people really living just above the water. And their hab units got stuck on concrete and there they are. These are but unlike a lot of the other stuff, I mean I could have a shop somewhere. I don't know. If I may do another sump board I could do with the marketplace to be quite honest. Um on the sump over the sump, I think that's quite neat, but I like this one just being hab units, is where just people of the sump live, um, but it needs to be big enough to get the odd boat in and that kind of thing, so, um, as opposed to shops and shop units, all those things, these things would make really cool shop units, uh, I'm actually loving these models, um, it's the first thing I think that Workshop have really made that doesn't look specifically 40k there's not a single skull in evidence for a start you know uh, they're really really cool um, although it's a Judge Dredd figure right this wouldn't look out of place with this they'd look fine um, certainly for Stargrave that kind of thing they'd look really really cool um, and I haven't got any painted Star Wars figures but I could easily imagine having some kind of that's a rebel trooper stood on there this could easily be a Star Wars piece of terrain as well you know without any bother at all I really like it from that point of view if these things are really cool I'd buy more of these um, well worth it certainly for the kind of Star Wars games I want to play which are kind of like skirmish almost tabletop role play skirmish kind of games um, they'd, they'd work really really well so, um, I kind of, I like that. These ones will uh, actually work really nicely from a 
uh, multi-system kind of like thing. Most of my Necromunda scenery is really Necromunda. I mean, even the Munitorium um, storage crates are very Necromunda with skulls and Adeptus Mechanicus stuff on them. But this hasn't got any of that. They're bloody ace. They're just really cool, generic sci-fi hab units and pods and stuff. And the fact you can stack them like this is really neat. I could easily not stack that there, but have that on this one. Um, you know, and have platforms and bits and pieces. And the fact that they kind of like, you could have, if you did it permanently, you could have pathways going off in different directions and all kinds of shiz. It's really cool. Um, although, the this one is definitely going to be stuck to a roof. Um, and then I'm going to think about how I'm going to light these as well. That's something I haven't thought about for this model. But um, I've got some cool individual LED lights I could use all these things too. I also haven't thought about which ones of these you plug. You get on the sprues, you do get wall panel plugs. So you can plug in some of your some of the walls. Not all of them though, you haven't got enough to do them all, don't think. But nevertheless, that's a cool option. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. I've got a so I think I'm pretty much settled on that. And um, now what I need to do, I'm not gonna stick this bit on now. Uh, it's one o'clock in the morning. I'm going to turn this upside down, apply my tissue paper and glue to the base of it, see if I could pull it back in a little bit, because like I said, I'm a bit miffed that it's warped. But yeah, I am really encouraged by the fact that these are really cool, generic -y kind of sci-fi kind of things. I don't think they look at all out of place with Star Wars stuff on them. I've got a bunch of painted shore troopers now. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got some other bits and pieces done. Yep, definitely, definitely. That's you know, they might get used to Star Wars games, which could be quite cool. If not, I'll buy some others to use the Star Wars games. Right, take this off and do the base. Yeah, definitely. Right, well, the simple answer is, is although the uh, tissue paper method underneath the uh, the board pulled it back a little bit. It hasn't pulled the warping out of it. I've taken these bits of concrete off this board, off the old board, and stuck them on a new board, and the old board has gone back into the pile to flatten out, which is really bloody annoying. But yeah, hey ho. So I'm now just working out other bits and pieces. Everything's going to be stuck back down. Yeah. So this walkway here is going to go up there like that. The tricky thing with these things actually is getting them where the angle is at angle. It's going to be enough to be able to actually still get a figure on it, wouldn't it? And not falling over. And then this walkway is going to go across here. Stick on that one. And then that one I'm sticking close enough to the edge, I think, where I might be able to set it up to have a walkway attached from another model over there. Uh. Put a bunch of glue under that. And then rather than have one of these neat hooky on gang planks here. Let's just check my distance. Yeah. I'll have another kind of more rickety gang plank, I think, going from this platform to there. Although I quite like could do that, twist that around like that. Yep. Come on, we're going here, bugger. And have a gangplank going across to this solid bit, and there's a little key there then. So if I do that like that, I think stick that there. Right, I need to leave those. So then I've got to start um thinking about a bit more character and a bit more stuff. There are little details so I haven't stuck on these models yet. Uh, I need to look at the, the, the instructions to see where they go. A little, just kind of, like, and then there are bits where there are hatches and there's a, I don't know, some kind of fuel pump.
poddy thing that's made to go on top of uh, this big beggar. Um, and I want stuff for the key sides around about, so uh, um, start adding that character to it. So, okay, well, I've fannied around with this enough. It's time to stick some of these big boys down. If I stick this one down here and stick this one down over here, I can then start to work out the details of the other bits and pieces. Um, while that's drying, I'm going to go digging through the cack. I am going to cut off this here because that just gets in the way of where it wants to sit on this little concrete key side. Um, but that side, I'm going to stick that down and then because I'm going to work out part anything else, which ones of these walkways um, are going to be stuck on permanently like that one um, and which ones of these walkways are going to be uh, removable because the bits of building are going to be removable above it so uh, let's do that let's go there so let's stick on a couple of models let's commit now to this model let's do it get the bostic get the yoohoo get the clear solvent based adhesive all right so i've got the main bits of the model the first main bits of the model stuck on uh, these walkways aren't stuck on but I have now stuck this big boy on here. Um, I've put one wire strop that's going to be floating on some kind of buoy there. Let's get it anchored down. I'm now going to add a couple of... Play around with some extra bits off the sprue. Like that. To go under a couple of the corners to make the whole thing a little bit more stable. Connecting this to the kind of like the concrete base. Because it's a bit rickety. I mean it sticks, it's fine. It works from a model point of view. But what it's not is solid from a handling point of view so the odd extra one of these I think stuck underneath and giving it a bit of support somehow might work although it's going to look a bit weird don't know could do with something though well, I do like this wire stop although again it's a pain in the bum for moving boats and things around I'm thinking of having a jetty or two lower down attached to the concrete but I don't want to lose too much water <sighs> certainly don't want to lose this waterway through here um, so I might have a thing at this end, or where this ladder is, there's going to be a ladder coming down here and another bit going down towards the water there, so I could have a jetty here, that makes sense. Um, something directly underneath this. It's not what I... So, um, I have got, one of the things I've got is I've got a base from a ridge hauler, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, that will make quite a cool jetty, I've put the two plates in there. Um, that's going to make quite a nice metal platey bit. I'm holding this bit of the model you can't see. <laughs> so that might do kind of here ish. That could be the kind of like jetty from there to there. Um, we just need to support that in the water. Okay, I'm uh, at the end of where I've got all my solid bits stuck on there we go um, actually the, the top part of this module here obviously is not stuck on but although I had stuck the roof to that um, and the roof on this is obviously going to come off so that's not stuck on but the rest of it is stuck on I have added a couple of extra details um, uh, now this this solid walkway here is put on all the way down here uh, and there's the jetty over here but I'm going to feature that in the next episode I have actually filmed um, some bits of the next episode already because I've got myself well into this and digging through the cack and finding loads of tiny little details and looking at all the different kind of sprues and things but um, I reckon this video is probably running to an hour already and all I've done is <coughs> stick some big bits together fanny around with some plywood and stick it on um, it's probably a lot of rambling in this video, so for that I apologise. Although if you're one of my people, you know, viewers who likes to sit and have me dribble at them while they get on and do their work, then um, here's an hour's worth of me fiddling with plastic. Next time, part two of this video, um, will be all about adding the detail. Um, let's see if I can prevent the bastard board not warping in the meantime. Uh, so part two is going to be about um, adding the water. Uh, adding all the detail to the different have units and of course painting it. So I'm hoping this is only a two-part video um, What have we learned this time around? Well, we've learned that I really like these ash waste have units I think they're really really cool because they offer tons and tons of opportunity although um, I would like more of these 
hole plugs so I can have more solid building but the balconies and the, the bits that hang down and all the walkways the possibilities are vast um, if you add several kits the modular, have run the dogs <laughs> the modular nature of these kits means you can do all kinds of really cool things with them so I'm well pleased with that um, I'm going to have to buy some more it's Chewbacca's birthday today Chewy is too hello Chewy yeah so I'm definitely going to have to get some more of these Ashways Hab units apart from anything else I really like them because like I said earlier I think they'll work really well for other sci-fi games as well as Necromunda they don't need to be D40K eyes before you can't like, play with them they work really really well I think a, a Star Wars game set on a marshy watery planet with kind of green water and these things and a few you know this thing coming into land near those things it's not it's not gonna look out of place at all i need a wacky gravy landing pad for this thing mind you Ooh, there goes. but i think that will be uh, a really cool thing so um i'm gonna go away and have a look and see which flgs is doing the best deal on them at the minute um because <coughs> they're not cheap are they but you know hey -ho. uh but we'll see what we can do so yes next time details water paint job bosh Back in the sump, I'm really enjoying myself. Thanks very much for viewing. If you've enjoyed my first return to the sump in at least 18 months, um, please leave a comment down below. Um, if it's the first time you've been here because this is a new Necromunda thing and you're in the Necromunda, click like and subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment, let me know, that'd be really cool. Oh, and you might not know then, if that's the case, that you can also support this channel via my Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Magrathia Builder Worlds um, and I run competitions on there three or four times a year where people have the opportunity to uh, select, choose, come up with a brilliant idea for a piece of scenery and I'll make the best one uh, and uh, I'm running a little bit behind in fact the last one I saw Alex at the start of this video I said you'd be getting you'd have that model before you saw this video and that hasn't happened, has it? No. That's because I thought I'd find a box big enough to put it in, but I haven't, have I? No. So I'm hoping it's going to go out next week. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I'm waiting on a few more people to get in contact with me about what they'd like to have made this time um, from a Patreon point of view. But in the meantime, I'm making Necromunda stuff and I'm going to be making Just Dread stuff. And I've got Star Wars stuff to make. It's going to be a really busy summer because I've got to go for being a pirate too. So, arr. Thanks for joining me on Magrathia Builder Worlds. I'll see you next time. Now, back to the summer.